being overweight is a very detrimental condition to have uh, and probably contributes substantially to osteoarthritis as well as the mix of genetics and some other kinds of features, I suppose. Similar to most chronic conditions, osteoarthritis is easier to manage if you're at a healthy weight and eating well. Managing weight by following Canada's food guide and eating correct serving portions is key. Important, too, is to know about food nutrients and supplements that are particularly beneficial to those with osteoarthritis. Not only does excess weight put three to six times extra force through your knee and hip, which can lead to pain and more damage to the cartilage, but it may even be implicated in the development of osteoarthritis of the knee. So it's worth it to examine the weight factor. Even losing a small amount of weight can make a big difference. And I did lose 25 pounds, and I did notice a difference, and I have kept it off, which pleases me. Body Mass Index, or BMI, can help you determine if you're at a healthy weight. Individual body weight in kilograms is divided by height squared in meters. Healthy weight falls between 18.5 and 24.9. For those over 65 years of age, a good BMI is 18.5 to 30. Weight is a lifelong issue for me and have recently begun to make use of the Aboriginal diet, which is essentially a no-carb diet or as low a carb diet as can be managed. And, and uh, this fits our traditional Aboriginal uh, body. Uh, our traditional foods were always high protein and vegetable and some whole fruit. Uh, by following that diet, essentially I'm not diabetic. If you have other health or dietary issues, it's a good idea to talk to your doctor or to a dietitian about particular diets. Although there have been several claims for an osteoarthritis diet, none have been scientifically proven. A sensible and safe way to lose weight is to eat correct portions of the variety of foods outlined in Canada's food guide. Eating nutrient-rich food coupled with exercise is the tried and true combination for lifelong weight control. On a daily basis, the food guide recommends adults eat 7 to 10 servings of vegetables and fruit, 6 to 8 servings of grain products, 2 to 3 servings of milk products, and 2 to 3 servings of meat and alternatives. That may seem like a lot to eat, but it isn't if correct food serving portions are taken into consideration. Women should consume the lower range of servings per day while men should consume the higher amount. And if you're trying to lose weight, you want to go for the minimum numbers on Canada's food guide. There's a reason, actually several reasons, that the guide advocates eating so many portions in a day from the vegetables and fruits category. You can eat freely from this group because fruits and veggies are filling, lower in calories, and they provide a good amount of the 25 to 35 grams of fiber needed in your diet per day. They also contain carbohydrates, several essential vitamins and minerals, and antioxidants. I'm told that antioxidants are very helpful for the conditions I have. Can you tell me sort of where I find them and how they help me? Absolutely. Antioxidants are um, found in fruits and vegetables, naturally found in fruits and vegetables, and they help to decrease the inflammation in the body. So what we recommend is that people eat a rainbow of different colored fruits and vegetables every day is the antioxidants are found tucked into the pigment of the different colors, so when you see a... A word on antioxidants. When cells use oxygen, they produce free radicals, which are implicated in cell damage and disease. Antioxidants enhance immune function and protect cells from oxidation. They bind to free radicals, thereby helping to reduce cell damage. Whether or not they make a big difference to those dealing with osteoarthritis isn't known but all the foods identified as being antioxidant-rich are also good sources of other nutrients and healthy compounds. That's one serving of a vegetable. Half a cup of broccoli. A medium apple is one serving. That would be two servings of fruits and vegetables. A big banana. A serving of carrots, half a cup. A serving of peas, half a cup. Half a cup of orange juice would be a serving. There's seven servings. It doesn't look like that much, does it? 
The trick is spread it throughout the day. So are you getting some kind of fruits and vegetables with each meal and as a snack? Of course, eat your vegetables and fruits as fresh and fat-free as possible. You can drink a lot of calories quickly from juice, and it doesn't have the same amount of fiber as whole fruit. Try mixing juice with water instead. Many fruits and vegetables are high in vitamin C, which has been found to delay the progression of osteoarthritis. Such foods include citrus fruits and their juices, strawberries, kiwi, peppers, red, orange, yellow, and green, tomatoes, and fortified juices. If you can't eat your daily requirement of vitamin C, consider taking a supplement that's not more than 500 milligrams. If you eat by color, it's um, usually you're getting in more vitamins and nutrients. Look for a colorful plate. Look for a colorful soup. Grain products contain carbohydrates, which energize the body. They also contain fiber, B vitamins, and important minerals. Carbohydrates have gotten a bad reputation for making up the foods that put on pounds. But not all grain products are created equal. It's the processed grains like white flour, white rice, and refined cereals that are low in fiber, and baked goods loaded with sugar and fat that are the high-calorie culprits. Less processed grain foods like whole wheat pasta, brown or wild rice, bran and oatmeal cereals are higher in fiber and nutrients and lower in fat and calories, so eat whole grain foods most often. Instead of choosing the donut, try a small oatmeal cookie. Consider portion sizes and read labels. You should eat six to eight servings per day of various grains. Examples of one serving are one slice of bread, one half cup of rice or pasta, or one half bagel. For cereal, check the particular package for the serving size and aim for at least three grams of fiber per serving. That's one serving of pasta, half a cup. So how many people would have, you know, four of their servings for the day in one sitting? Usually you just fill the plate up. Exactly. It's, and what happens when you eat that much at one time? It goes on your hips. That's pretty much what happens. <laughs> milk products such as milk, yogurt, and cheese are important for those with osteoarthritis because they're excellent sources of calcium. Milk also has vitamin D added to it. Both calcium and vitamin D are essential for strong, healthy bones. Two to three low-fat servings per day are recommended. Examples of one serving are one cup or 250 milliliters of milk, three quarters of a cup or 175 milliliters of yogurt, and two ounces or 50 grams of cheese. Vitamin D is in milk. It's not necessarily in your cheese or your yogurt, so you have to read the label. Vitamin D is very important for healthy bones. You are getting some from milk. You're also getting some from fish. Those are the two main sources of vitamin D and sunshine. Good source of vitamin D, but you still need to take a supplement. I do take vitamin D and calcium. That's sensible for a person of my age, a woman, but I'm very careful that I do take that because I want the best bones I can have to support this, uh, my new knee. You may need to take a calcium supplement or drink extra milk. Skim milk is the best choice because you get your calcium without the extra fat and calories. Milk and especially water are recommended hydrating fluids. 8 to 12 glasses, which is 2 to 3 liters of fluid per day, are recommended for proper hydration. If you don't like water, try adding a bit of lemon or other juice for flavor. Lower calorie vegetable juices, herbal tea, and decaf coffee are other good hydrating choices. Limit dehydrating fluids like coffee, tea, alcohol, and caffeinated sodas. Meats and alternates contain protein, fat, B vitamins, vitamin E, and important minerals. You need two to three servings per day. If you're going for surgery, it's very important to eat enough meat or alternatives so that you have good protein levels in your blood. Protein helps to speed wound healing. Examples of one serving are two to three ounces of meat, fish, 
or poultry, two eggs, three quarters of a cup or 175 milliliters of tofu, two tablespoons, which is 30 milliliters of peanut butter, or three quarters of a cup, which is 175 milliliters of cooked beans or lentils. Try to eat vegetarian alternatives more often. Eat lean meats and poultry, but with fish, choose the fatty type such as salmon, tuna, sardines, mackerel, and trout because they're rich in omega-3 fatty acids which have heart health and anti-inflammatory properties. Other good sources of omega-3s are flaxseed and its oil, olive, canola, and peanut oil, walnuts, and hemp seeds. When you put a meal together, a good rule is to have the meat or alternative take one quarter of the plate, grain or starch one quarter, and vegetables or fruit the remaining half of the plate. Support this great nutrient balance by keeping your fat and salt intake low. To properly check what you're consuming, it's important to learn how to read food labels. Various grocery stores offer information tours. You might find it helpful to sign up for one. Learn how to read nutrition labels because they give you a lot of good information to help you make some healthy choices. Uh, the first thing to look at is the list of ingredients here. The ingredients list tells you, in descending order from most to least, what the product contains. For example, on this loaf of bread, there is a whole wheat flour followed by multigrain blend and wheat gluten. This means there is more whole wheat flour than multigrain blend, and more multigrain blend than wheat gluten, and so on. The nutrition facts label tells you portion amount and calories, and nutrients found in this amount. The percent daily value tells you what percent of a nutrient is in the serving portion. This label tells you that two slices contain 7% of the fat you should eat in a day. Only 2% of the fat is saturated, so 5% is monounsaturated or polyunsaturated, which is a healthy fat. And there is 16% of your daily fiber requirement in this portion. I take a variety of supplements. The one that has made the most difference for me, be simply besides vitamins, uh, is uh, glucosamine chondroitin. Uh, at the suggestion of my physician, um, uh, he said, try it, see what it does. He said, it does some things for some people, it doesn't for others. Uh, I had a very significant change uh, in the amount of pain that I was experiencing um, in a very short period of time. Clinical data that showed that there was relief with glucosamine sulfate and the chondroitin were for moderate to severe osteoarthritis and not for everyone. Um, if you're finding that it's a very expensive supplement and that it's not making a difference, um, you may want to stop taking it. What I encourage you to do is write down everything you eat for a day or two and see what you're actually eating. A lot of people go, oh, I thought I was eating more fruits and vegetables, but I'm not doing it on a daily basis. So it's getting some of those habits ingrained. Once you've determined what you do eat, then it's easier to know how to change your eating habits. Get proactive, list what you plan to change, and set SMART goals to help you succeed. Remember, with osteoarthritis, losing extra pounds is key. Eat well to get the proper amount of fiber, antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, calcium, and vitamin C and D. Limit extra calories, salt, and fats. Drink plenty of hydrating fluids. And exercise as much as you are able. So if you want to enjoy something, enjoy it. Just eat less. Um, it's about making little changes every day 